So alongside iOS 17.2, which Apple released a couple weeks ago, the Apple Journal app was finally released to all iOS 17.2 updates. And the Journal app, honestly, I've been very pleasantly surprised. And this is coming from somebody who's never really journaled into life, both physically or digitally. Like, I've never really even thought about journaling. I've definitely heard about it, and I see the positives of it, but... This journal app has really kind of opened my eyes as to what journaling is and how easy it can be and it really lowered the barrier of entry to really get started in the journaling kind of experience and uh, initiative that you want to have. So in this video, I just want to give you guys my two-week kind of review and my hands-on experience on the journal application itself. I'll give you guys a walkthrough of exactly what it entails and then also give you guys my overall experience and why I think the journal app is great for those people like myself who have zero, who have little to no experience journaling. So let's get into the video. All right, everyone, let's get right into this video. And the first thing you need to know is that with the journal application, you need to be on iOS 17.2. So if you're on any iPhone, it will work as long as it supports 17.2, just something to take into consideration. And as of right now, it's only on iOS. So there is no Mac OS version of this app. There's no iPad OS version of this app. It's only available on iPhone, which it's kind of sad because I do wish it came out on the iPad since there's such a big canvas on it, but maybe eventually it will come out maybe in you know iPad OS 18 like Apple likes to do. Now, when you open up the application, what I want to do is go through a little bit of a walkthrough on how to actually use it because it's very, very simple. There aren't many options to take advantage of. So once you learn these few options, it'll be very easy to kind of get this going. So this is the home page, and this is what you get greeted with when you do open the journal's application. And as you can see, there isn't much to do, right? You can scroll through your feed, which is all journal postings that you've made over the past couple days or weeks. It's pretty much just a running chronological list, which you can change, but it is defaulted by a chronological list of posts. And then you have your main plus button down here, which is to create a new post, which we'll touch on in a little bit. And then you have your filtering options, which is all entries, entries that have photos, videos, music, activity, reflections, and then places as well. Because as you can see, there is different forms of media that you can kind of put into a journal post. But to walk you guys through what a journal entry looks like, again, what I love about this application, and I'm gonna give you guys some anecdotal information is, I love that it makes it very easy to actually journal, right? Because as I've mentioned before, I'm not a journaler. I've never journaled. Not that I had anything against it. It was just something that I didn't really think about doing ever. I know that there's a lot of people that like to do it and it's great for mental health and mental awareness and keeping a positive mindset. And I see the benefit of journaling. But again, for me, the barrier to entry was too high, even if it is as simple as a pen and paper and remembering to write something down or you know taking five minutes out of my day versus here, all you do is you press the plus button and you do have suggestions kind of built into here, which we'll touch on in a second because you can turn this off if you really want to. But I highly, highly recommend leaving the recommended suggestions on because it gets you 80 to 90% of the way there in terms of what your journal entry can be. So for instance, these are some journal entries that are being suggested. So afternoon walk on Saturday, it lets you know that, hey, you had an activity that was walking. It gives you, it lets you know where you did it. So this is an example of a journal post. You have some photos, it lets you know that you walked for almost 4,000 steps. It lets you know where you were with the location, it shows you some videos, some pictures that you took on that day. And then you can start writing or save without writing. So you can literally save it as is. So you don't even have to do anything. All you have to do is, all you have to do is make sure that you want these photos and videos that are in here. Maybe if you want to rename it, which is kind of surprising how weird and bad this UI is. I thought Apple would give us a better UI. But again, you can rename the title. And then if you just want to leave it like this, you can just press save without writing. But if you want to start writing and write a little bit about it, it's going to populate all these images and media, write down exactly what you want. And then what you can do on the top right, right here in the three dots, you can actually have this entry saved as the day that you actually submitted this entry. So for this day is January 2nd or the day that it was at the actual moment of this entry. So the moment that these pictures and videos were taken, or you can completely do a custom date if you wanna backdate this for some reason, or you can even delete it from here. But again, you write whatever you want and then you're good to go. And you can even have more photos and more suggestions and then you can add photos and add videos and even add some audio and add location, which is something that I don't, I don't really do the audio part too much, but I might start doing it. But this is exactly what a journal entry looks like. And then you can even bookmark it so it's easier to find later on. So I'll press done here. And then you can see that it's right there as your next chronological journal entry, submitted January 2nd, afternoon walk. And then from here, if you do wanna pin it, you can pin it on the left or I bookmark it, or you can delete it or edit it. I'm gonna delete it because this isn't one that I want on here. Maybe I'll do one in the future, but that is an example of how to create a journal entry. And then you also have the ability to add the plus button in terms of different types of actual journal entries, right? So for instance, if you scroll through here, you have a reflection question. So review your recent memories, write about something that made you smile and why. So this is just a suggestion that Apple and iOS gives to you. And again, everything is fully encrypted. Everything has the same encryption as iMessage and iCloud. So this is saved on device. It doesn't go to the cloud. Apple isn't learning anything about you. So they say, I mean, take that with a grain of salt, but I believe them. So this is all on device. And it's not like you're giving more personal information to Apple that they can then take advantage of and then you know maybe spit ads to you or something like that. But that is something to take into consideration. And if you wanna start from complete scratch, 
All you have to do is press that plus button again, and then just write in a new entry, and then you can just start from scratch. Maybe you have a thought that you want to put down, or a note, or whatever the case may be, or maybe there's a specific moment that you want to put in there, a specific picture. You can do that as well. And same thing applies with the dots and the bookmarking. And then you press done, and then you're good to go. But again, it's that simple, and that is why I love this. Again, I was not a journaler, and now with this, I am a journaler, or at least I'm journaling on the journal app, because it's so easy. And then I like to go back in here and just kind of look at the memories, right? Like, it's very cool to just click in here, look at all the photos that were being taken, right? A nice little memory where you were, you know, some photos that were taken. It's very cool to just kind of look back and see exactly what you did that day, especially, you know, when you have kids and you want to get nostalgic, and, you know, kids grow up so fast that you want to be able to keep those memories. And maybe, you know, for instance... My daughter was sick this day, but I was also, I had to work, so I couldn't really take care of her that much, so my wife had to take care of her, and I felt like I was missing out. So different ways to kind of go back and almost re-experience what you already went through, which is awesome. And then also, you have something like this, which is an auto kind of recommended suggestion journal app, which is, hey, I did an activity, I went on an outdoor run, I listened to the Waveform podcast, it was a five and a half mile run, you can click in here to get some information. And what I do wish they had was, I wish that if you clicked on one of these, you had the ability to then maybe tap on this again, and then it would take you to your activities app, or if you clicked on this, it would take you to Spotify or Apple Music. And if you clicked on this, I wish it would take you to Apple Podcasts to actually go to this podcast, maybe finish it if you hadn't finished it yet. And there is an SDK for third-party developers. So if you are a third-party developer, you will be able to then tie into this recommendation kind of formula or engine to be able to get recommendations on third-party applications like Spotify or like a Google Maps, things like that. But for right now, it is only on native applications from what I've seen so far. And now one more thing I did want to touch on with the journal application is the actual settings themselves because as, as you guys saw, the journal app doesn't have too many options, but for good reason. But if you go into the journal application, mine might look a little bit different than yours because I am on 17.3 beta 1, but 17.2 is very familiar and very similar. But you have your kind of normal journal settings in terms of location data and photos with private access, ability to check your camera and things like that. But you also have some other abilities in here. So you have skip journaling suggestions. Again, unless you want to just journal from scratch and that's what you want to do, I recommend leaving this turned off because if you turn this on, then all the suggestions that we had on the previous one, so if I want to press plus here, no suggestions show up and it takes you directly into this blank canvas, which to some people, they want that. Others like myself, I want to keep this turned off because I want those suggestions. And then also you can lock your journal app with your iPhone passcode. So if you turn this on, I'll walk you guys through what it looks like. It'll tell you that you want to lock it after you input your actual code, and then you can require your passcode after one minute or whatever the case may be, 5, 15. I'm, I like to leave it unlocked because, you know, I don't have a reason to keep it locked for whatever the case may be, but that is what it is. And then you also have a notification journaling schedule. So I have mine set for Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Just as a little reminder to maybe, hey, take a second, even while you're walking your dog or whatever, and quickly submit a journal entry because it's only going to be a positive thing. It's kind of like that saying where, you know, people never regret going to the gym no matter how badly they don't want to go to the gym. Same kind of idea applies here. It's like maybe sometimes I don't want to write anything or sometimes I don't really care to go into the app, but after I actually submit a journal entry, then I'm happy about it because then I can go back a week or two weeks later and be like, oh, that was nice that I was able to kind of uh, leave a memory or be able to kind of go back and check on that. So the journal app has been great so far. And then you have the ability to save photos and videos taken inside of the journal to your photos app because like you guys saw, if I go into this journal entry and press on the camera right here and I take a photo, It'll only live in the journal app unless I press this button right here, which will then save it also to your camera roll. Very similar to how iMessage does it, where if you take a picture in your iMessage, it'll save into your camera roll after you send it out. But that is a journaling app, and I've just been loving the experience as a, again, I'm a non-journaler. I've never journaled before in my entire life. Never personally saw a big benefit in it in terms of the amount of time it takes versus what you get out of it. But this has been absolutely perfect for a person like me. But again, the simpler, the better, in my opinion, when it comes to something like journaling, because the smaller the barrier to entry is, the easier it's going to be to get that journal entry done, and the better you're going to feel about it after you are done with that journal entry. So again, it gets you 80 to 90% of the way there in terms of getting that journal entry completed with these journal entry suggestions. And then you just finish it off with a couple of words, maybe a little sentence or two to remember why exactly you're writing that journal entry and then you're done. So journal entry, I highly recommend if you're not somebody that journals at all, jump into this one because again, it's a native app. It's included in your phone. It's built into your phone if you have 17.2. And if you don't like it, you just delete it. There's no paid service or anything like that. And it is tied to your iCloud. So it'll be picked up on any new iPhone or any other iPhone after the fact. But let's get out of this view and finish up the video. So that will just about do for this video, everybody. As you can see with the journal application itself, again, I have no other journal application that I've ever used. And I've heard that there's an app called Day One or One Day, I believe it's called, that has a lot more features and is a little bit more robust. And I'm definitely gonna start to try those out just to kind of get a level setting ground as to what to expect from journaling applications moving forward. But the journal app from Apple is, again, the lowest barrier of entry to get you started in the journaling world and having that sort of initiative to get started because 
Like I mentioned earlier, about 80 to 90% of the journal entry is done for you already. All you have to do is kind of like write a couple words in there, title it, and then just press submit, and then you're all journaled up and ready to go. And I have seen it as an overall net positive in my day-to-day, -day, so it's just been about two cents with the journal application. I absolutely love it. If you're somebody like me that's never journaled before and wants to try it out, this is going to be the easiest way to do it because the second you update a 17.2, it's just gonna show up on your home screen and you can use it or delete it. It's totally up to you, but that's gonna do it for this video, everybody. Let me know with a comment down below. Have you tried the journaling app? Are you an experienced journaler? Have you been doing it for a while? Are you somebody like myself that's just recently started just because of the journaling app? Very curious to know what everybody's experience has been like. But overall, I think the journal app is definitely one of the bigger sleeper features and applications Apple's released in the recent years because I'm absolutely in love with it. But that's going to do it for this video, everybody. If you guys want to watch more iOS, iPadOS, or macOS videos, click on one of these right here. But until next time, I'm Fernando. No matter, everybody. Peace. Leave a little dolphin in the comments down below, too.